So now we have updated all of our devices. We have added all of our devices to our account. Uh, we have added them to uh, the room called new room. And uh, next up is that we need to identify all of the devices. We have to move them to the right rooms and then we need to configure the device settings. So they're configured in the right way, depending on which types of buttons we're using and so on. Um, let's just continue with the next step. So um, to add our devices to the right rooms, we of course have to identify the devices first. So um, what I'm going to do to identify the devices is that simply I'm going to press the buttons to figure out which device am I turning on and turning off. It's pretty simple as we don't have that many devices now. Uh, let's see if I'm trying to press the dimmer. Actually, what you will see now is that uh, with the latest uh, firmware of the dimmer, the Shelly dimmer will automatically start a calibration the first time you are turning on the light. And that's what I did now. I turned on the light after I updated the device to the latest firmware. So uh, it means that now my Shelly uh, dimmer is starting to calibrate. A calibration means that it tries to adapt uh, uh, to the type of light that you have connected to it. So it tries to learn how it works, tries to find the minimum dimming level, uh, brightness level, tries to find uh, the, 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 the dimming curve uh, so it will make a nice dimming for you. It takes a couple of minutes. We can see uh, the progress bar here. Um, let's just wait to, uh, till it to finish. All right, so now the calibration has finished for my dimmer. And if I press the device uh, on off button here, I will be able to switch it turned on and turn it off from the app. I can also do it by pressing uh, the button manually and you can see that it's turning on and turning off. So now I have identi identified this uh, dimmer here. I know exactly where it's installed. Uh, I will then press it. I'll go to the settings. There's a few settings that I recommend you to do. Um, first thing is to add a device node. So press the two cogwheels here, go to the device node. So this is a very good idea as an installer to, to, to add a short note about where is the device installed because it might be hidden somewhere uh, behind your wall switch but which walls, which nobody knows, or maybe in the ceiling, um, behind, the, behind the ceiling lamp or similar. So let's just add a short note here, which makes it easier for the next installer or next time you come to, to make some support for the device. Installed, find wall switch in living room. So now I know exactly where it's installed. I press save. Uh, this is a very good idea to add. All right. So next thing I want to do is to go to um, to the last, the big cogwheel here to make sure that all settings for the device is set up correctly. Uh, what I will do is that I will check the input output settings now. Uh, as you can see, it's set up in button mode, meaning that it's set up to, to, to be used by a regular push button. This is great. This is what I would like to do. Uh, if, you, uh, were, if you would be using a regular switch, a uh, toggle switch, then you could change the, the input uh, to a switch mode. Let's keep it in button mode. Uh, but as you can see here, I installed a double uh, switch here. So I would like now to change the input mode to dual button mode because then I would be able to use one button for turning on and increasing the brightness and another button for turning off and dimming down the brightness of the device. This is how I would like to do it this time. You can also change the action on power on. So the device is already configured to restore the last mode it was in when it was powered. Um, I might want to change it to automatically turn off if there has been a, a power loss. Press save. And now this has been 
configured. Let's just check. Uh, so I should be able now to turn on. I should also be able to turn off on the other button now. So now it works in two button mode. I press and hold, it should increase the brightness. And it does. It in dimming very nice, I would say. And if I hold it uh, on the right button, it should increase the brightness. Yes. Uh, it looks very good uh, from where I'm sitting. It might be hard to catch on the camera, but it dims very nice. Good. I would like to check the, the, the dimming level though. So next thing I would like to do is to change the, let me see here, the minimum brightness level. Yeah, minimum maximum brightness. So minimum brightness level is zero. Uh, let me see. Actually, when I dim all the way down, it does not turn off. It, it stops on one percent. It's actually doable. So this is very good. Very often, when you have LED bulbs, you need to set the minimum brightness level to be five or sometimes ten percent, depending on the quality of your LED bulb. Uh, let's say that if that you have a LED bulb which uh, turns off when you dim down the brightness to four percent. In that case, I would prefer to set the minimum brightness to 5% to make sure that the customer will never dim down the brightness too much so that the device will turn off. So this is what we are going to do. So let's go to the settings. Uh, let's go to minimum maximum brightness. And here I would change the minimum brightness to 5%. Press save. Now it asks me to reboot device. That's fine. Let's wait for the device to reboot. And now it's online. Uh, so now it means that when I dim down to 1%, it is actually 5% because I changed the minimum brightness to 5%. You can also change the maximum brightness if the brightness level on maximum level is too bright. All right. Here you can change the minimum brightness on toggle, meaning when you are using the wall switch. And it's good to have uh, a minimum brightness set here. Sometimes you need a uh, higher brightness uh, to actually turn on the lights. Sometimes it needs a bit more power. Uh, but it figured out uh, during the calibration that the value is set to 3% and that should work. So this is great. Button fade rate. So the button fade rate is uh, changing how fast or defining how fast the brightness is increasing and decreasing when you are pressing and holding down the button. I think it is slightly too slow. So I would like to change it to 4x, which is slightly faster. It goes from 1x to 5x. Let's see, now it's changed a bit. Let me press and hold and yeah, I think this is better. What else do we have here? There's one more thing I think that we should change. This is the transition duration. And the transition duration is uh, defining how fast it should turn on and turn off the device in uh, seconds. Honestly, I, I prefer one or two seconds instead of three seconds. Uh, so let's try to change it to two seconds, meaning that it should now take one or two seconds to turn uh, on and off the light. So this is this is better in my opinion. I changed uh, changed it to two seconds. All right. This is the most important settings in my opinion for the dimmer. Now I have configured the dimmer correctly, and I know that this is the the dimmer that should be installed in the living room. So I will also move it to the living room. I do that by pressing the edit button of the device here. And then I can change the room. So I will change it to the living room. I can now change the name, but that's fine. Press save. And now I have my dimmer one uh, added to the living room. But to be able to go back and find the rest of the devices, I have to press my home or press the go back button here and go back to my new device room.